quoting is a weak move. It is weak. It is not strong. It is weak. If you are one of those insurance producers who just go through a normal competitive quoting process, your hit ratio, I guarantee you, probably isn't even, it, it's not even like close. You're probably half of what you could be because quoting is weak. Quoting is a weak move. There is a much better process to this. But, but can I just let you into a little bit of a secret? Is, um, well, you know, the insurance industry has been built on quoting. So quoting can work. It just doesn't work really good. It's just not really good. But I do think that if you could quote and quote more wisely and quote more strategically, you could increase your hit ratio dramatically. At the end of the day, the broker of record letter is the fastest, smartest, most ethical approach to building a $1 million or more book of business, period. The BOR is king. Yet at the same time, there are plenty of times in which you cannot get it. And so you're going to have to go through a quoting process. In this podcast episode, what I'm going to teach you basically are three things, count them up, one, two, three, three things you need to do to increase your hit ratio by about 50% if you go through a normal competitive quoting renewal process. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey, everybody. My name is Charles Specht. I am the host of the Millionaire Insurance Producer Podcast, and I'm glad that you're here. And so like normal, let's dive into this bad boy, shall we? We're talking quoting, 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 quoting. I would suspect you have quoted. I would suspect you get quotes. Why? Because, well, that's frankly how we get, we get information to be able to show to a prospect that we've been doing some due diligence. Um, you can't bind anything unless you get a quote. The insurance industry is founded on underwriters and insurance carriers putting to quotes on our, putting together quotes on our behalf so that we can give those to insurance buyers. There is no way that you can get around quoting. My typical focus when I'm, you know, educating producers and agencies is that we understand quoting. Everybody knows how to quote. The insurance industry is built onto that. All of the old white guys at your agency, they built their book of business on quoting. I get it. It works. And we're going to quote. But we don't have to quote. We don't have to just sort of like lay down to the entire process and go through a quoting process with the insured. I actually then focus on, obviously, the broker of record letter first. This is what we really want to go for. We want to go for the jugular. We're not just going to sit down and actually just sling mud and throw it against the wall to see what sticks. Why? Because quoting is a weak move. It's weak. The industry statistic is 92%. That 92% of the time, the incumbent agent will retain his or her clients. And so that means if you just go through a normal quoting process on the typical account, you got about an 8% shot at winning the business. Okay, That's just not good from a historical standpoint. Um, in fact, I would say most insurance agents out there in the middle market space who are independent agents have a significantly higher retention rate on their clients than 92%. I would suspect it's probably 95, maybe 97% or even greater. We typically don't lose our, our accounts. This is good. We retain our clients. This is a good thing. So just going through a normal competitive renewal process is not a wise move if you're going to do that as a producer. Yet... We do offer quotes. I just say, go for the broker record letter first, secure the client, and then we go out and get the quotes on their behalf. Because whether you are going through a quoting process or if you're getting the broker record letter first, you're going to end up getting quotes. It is just wiser to go BOR first and quote second. Please listen to what I just said. It is wiser to go BOR first and quote second, but there are plenty of times when the broker record letter is simply just not an option. Maybe they're with a captive carrier. Maybe they're with a, a program or a carrier that you simply can't access. Maybe it's uh, you know, with a carrier that just doesn't accept BORs, maybe with their, the surplus lines, and you know, maybe that brokerage has some kind of an exclusive or semi-exclusive, or they just don't accept it, or whatever. There's a lot of different reasons why the BOR process won't work on an account-to-account -account basis. But let's just say that if you can get it, it's better off. You're better off. But if you can't get it and you want to work on the account, you're going to go through a quoting process. Nothing against that. That's how the business works. But I would say just blindly throwing mud against the wall to see what sticks is not a wise move. 
I would tell you that there are a few things that you want to get from the insured before you move forward. And if you can do this, I would suspect that you will probably write about 50% more commission in a year than you might have otherwise written. In other words, listen to me. If you're going to write, let's just call it $100,000 of commission in a year, I would tell you that if you do these three things, you're probably right about 150000 It's that we are losing a lot. Our hit ratio is not very good. Our win ratio is not very good from a normal quoting process. And if we can do certain things, we're going to win more accounts over the course of the year, and therefore we're probably going to be writing about 50% more commission in the year if we can increase our hit ratio. And that's what I want to talk about in this podcast is how you can increase your hit ratio and and actually write about 50% more commission in just a 12-month period. Period. Okay, so here's the thing. Every single account that you work on, Mr. Mrs. Miss Insurance Agent, you have to make a business decision on whether or not it makes sense for you to actually do that. You know, you might be working on an account or like talking to a prospect and they've been with their agent for 10 years. Well, I don't know if I'm going to work on that account. I might. I don't know. There's a lot of different things that I have to take in, into consideration to see whether or not that's going to make sense. But you might want to go forward. You might want to push pause. You might not want to work on that account because it might take a lot of your time. But you have to make a business decision on whether or not it even makes sense to go forward. But let's say you're having that conversation. You're sitting down with your prospect, you know, Bob, the, the, the prospect. You're sitting down with Bob, and you're having a good conversation with Bob, and you're talking about this and that. And, you know, he's got his agent. He, he, maybe he's like not really interested in giving you the broker record letter at this point. Um, he's definitely willing to move forward and he's potentially like willing to maybe do business with you after all is said and done, but he's not just going to take it away from his agent. And so, which means that because he's not willing to just take it away from his agent, I, please listen to this. I don't know what you're doing, but come back. If he's not willing to give you the broker of record letter, then all things being equal, if your quote is the same as Bob's, you don't win. Okay. All things being equal. If he's not going to give you the sign broker record letter and you have to go through a quoting process and your premium comes in at 100 grand and the incumbent agents comes in at 100 grand, you don't win. I mean, you don't win. You don't win. You would have to come in significantly less expensive, whatever that means, probably with, a, with an equal or greater policy, you know, coverages, terms, conditions, all that, in order to win the business. So a quoting process can work if you have certain things, but usually it doesn't work because if they're unwilling to give you the BOR in the first place, that means that the agent has a better relationship than you actually think they do. Okay, but here are three things that I would tell you you need to get from your prospect before you go through the quoting process. And if you don't get these three things, I would say that you are unwise. I would say, if I can say it this way, please don't don't hold it against me. Don't don't think bad of me. But I would say you're a sucker if you go through the quoting process and you don't get these three things. You don't want to be a sucker, right? You want to be wise. You want to be smart. You want to be astute. You want to be professional. You don't want to be taken advantage of. You don't want to be the honesty cop. You don't want to just be working in order to keep the incumbent agent you know, honest. That's not why you're here in the business. You're here in the business to win, to go for the jugular, because none of the insurance carriers that you do business with pay any commission for second place. You either come in first or you lose. That's it. So we have to win. So here are the three things. First, you have to be able to have exclusive access to the carriers and or markets that you know you need in order to be competitive. Let me say it again. The insured has to agree to give you exclusive access to represent the carriers or the markets access points of, of the carriers that you know you need to have in order to be competitive. And if they are unwilling to give those carriers to you, I say, don't move forward. Don't go forward. If they're going to say, like, let's just say, you know, ABC insurance carrier, I need to have ABC insurance carrier and XYZ insurance carrier. Those are two carriers that I feel I need in order to move forward with you, Bob. And I'm willing to go ahead and go through a courting process if I can have access to those. If Bob says something like, you know, no, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to take any carriers away from my agent. Red flag, such a red flag. That's like the red card in the soccer match. I'm out. I'm out, man. I'm not playing here anymore. Um, 
do not move forward because there's just no way that you're going to win this business. I mean, obviously, if they are unwilling to give you access to the carriers that you know you need in order to win the business, you're not going to win the business. And so that's why I'm saying we have to have a very transparent conversation. This is usually going to be at the end of the first conversation you have. Hopefully it's a face-to-face meeting where you go through all the different things that I teach about and how to lead a first appointment. You then go through the timeline of services and so forth. You're asking for the BOR. They say no. Initially, now we've got to ask these three questions. If I can't get access to the carriers that I know I need, if Bob's not going to give them to me, then I'm not moving forward. Doesn't make any sense. Literally doesn't make any sense. Okay, so that's the first thing. I want access to those, and I am going to uh, probably have them sign two broker of record letters in this example, two broker of record letters for those two carriers. I'm going to be putting their names on it and so forth. Um, I need to have him actually give me signatures on those pieces of paper if I'm going to move forward. Because it's quite likely that, that if you're already meeting with the prospect, that that the other agent, the incumbent, has likely gone to the marketplace. Now, just as an FYI, let's put a little asterisk next to this. This is kind of maybe a, 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 a super producer moment, is that before you ever go to any appointment, you should call the main carriers that you know you need on that account before you meet with a client, before you meet with the prospect, rather. So if there's two, three, five different insurance carriers that you know are pretty good, you want to have access to those, I would call just to find out whether or not they've received a submission yet. Because if you already know that you're blocked out, even before you actually meet with them, you know exactly where this conversation needs to go. Otherwise, you can't move forward. And so I would also tell you, if it hasn't been selected yet, if the incumbent agent has not submitted anything yet, then you're in a strong position. You are in a strong, unique position to be able to say, you know, by the way, your account's coming up 45 days you know, from now for you know, your renewal. Uh, typically, insurance carriers need at least like 30 days to work on it. But um, on many of the carriers will accept submissions 90 to even 120 days beforehand. And I've actually called five of these carriers that I want to work with, and none of the five have actually received any kind of a submission yet. So I want to be able to represent these going forward because it seems as though the other agent um, maybe isn't interested or just really has sort of dropped the ball at this point. So I'm going to have a conversation like that. But that knowledge is very important. So have those conversations with the insurance carrier. You know, just say, hey, I just want to find out if you've received a submission on such and such account. And usually, like, they'll tell, tell you that. They'll say, yeah, we've already received a submission. Like, they're not necessarily going to tell you maybe which agent it is. That's okay. I don't need to know that. I just need to know, is the market right now open or is it my blocked out? That's it. So that first thing, market access. If you don't have market access, don't move forward. If they're going to give you those carriers, then I would say, okay, we're past, we're past hurdle number one. I'm willing to move forward, uh, at least in the conversation, because now i got to get to step two. Step two here now is I have to figure out what I need to accomplish in regards to the quality of my product, that is the coverages, and how much I have to offer in premium savings, if anything, in order to be, please listen to this word I'm about to use. Come back. This is an important word. I need to figure out the quality of the product plus price savings in order to be guaranteed the win the business. Not that they're looking for that type of savings, not that they will give me serious consideration, but I want an actual guarantee. Bob, if I can save you 5% on my quote, will you right now just agree with me that you will not then bind coverage with the other agent, but you will give me the business. You'll do business with me. You know, I, I like to work with people that, you know, we're very clear, we're men of our word. If you tell me that if I can achieve that, that you then will do business with me, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If we can agree on that, I, I would want to move forward with you. Have that conversation. What are you, like chicken? Are you chicken? You know, you need to be strong, a professional. Sales is war. We're not playing patty cake here. Nobody's playing patty cake. We're actually trying to win business. We're trying to get the incumbent agent fired so that you can get hired. This is an important conversation to have. I'm not saying it's an easy conversation to have. I'm saying you better have this conversation. Otherwise, that's why your hit ratio is so low. So, got to have it. I want to be very clear, crystal clear. I don't want some sort of vague you know, spectrum. Well, like we're kind of like, we'd like to see, you know, between, you know, 5% and 15%. Mm. Well, that doesn't tell me anything. Uh, I want to know the actual number. 
is it 5%? If I have to hit 5%, is that the number? Um, he might also throw out like some big number, like, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make a switch unless it's at least 30%. Really? Like, that's a big number. Uh, do you feel you can do that? Because, again, you have to make a business decision. But I would also, like, kind of talk them down, like, hey, 30% is like, a, that's, that's crazy number, right? We need to kind of come back to reality. 5% equals this amount of money. You know, 7% equals this amount of money. You guys, you just have to, like, negotiate on this. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, we are a producer. We are a salesperson. We have to negotiate on these things. And I would not move forward unless Bob told me what the number is. I would just keep pushing the conversation. Bob, you know, just it would be like if you came to me and I'm a builder and you came and said, hey, Charles, I want you to build a house. I'm like, oh, man, I'm so excited to work with you, Bob. Um, what's your budget? How many bedrooms do you want and so forth? And then what's your budget? How much do you want to spend? And if you said to me something like, you know, um, well, I want five bedrooms and I want it to be on this lot, but I don't want to tell you how much I'm willing to spend. Um, I want to kind of keep that to myself. But you go ahead and build that house. And then once it's all done, I'll tell you whether or not I want to buy it after you tell me how much the price is. Like, yeah, that's kind of stupid. Nobody would do that. But we do it all the time when it comes to insurance. We like, we're out there like building insurance policies all the time. And we have no idea whether or not these people are going to buy it. We're just like slinging mud. We're throwing mud against the wall. We'll tell you what. Just use that as an example. You know, use that builder example and saying, look, if, I, if, if you were a builder, Bob, and I came to you and said, Bob, I would like for you to buy me, uh, build me a house. I want, you to, I want to pay you to build me a house. And I want five bedrooms and three and a half baths, and I want it on a lot that's one acre. You know, can you do that for me? And you say, yeah, absolutely. And then you'll tell me, like, well, how much do you, I, how much you want to spend on this house? Like, you know, the quality of the products and all of that. And if I said, Bob, you know, I just, I don't want to talk about numbers. I don't want to get locked into anything. But why don't you just go ahead and build it? And then once it's done, I'll kind of take a look at it, give it some serious consideration, and I'll decide whether or not I want to move forward. Like, Bob, wouldn't you tell me to take a hike? Of course you would, Bob. Similarly, when you're, you're kind of asking me to do the same thing with regards to like doing all of this work, to work with all of these carriers, and to put together a product, and I really have no idea, what, idea whether or not you're even going to buy it. That's why I'm really asking you to, to tell me what I have to do in order to win your business. I'm just trying to figure out what are the rules of the game here. And I actually feel, my friends, I feel like that is, that is professional. That just makes more sense. So I just need to get a firm number. Okay, so the first one, you got to have market access points. You have to have exclusive access to market access points. The second thing is you got to know exactly what you have to accomplish in regards to price savings or some kind of like policy. You know, there might be a particular coverage they need, whatever it is, but you just have to be able to figure out what exactly you have to, you have to accomplish in coverage and price in order to be guaranteed the business. Once you have that, then if they say, Here's the number. I'm like, okay, great. Got two, two hurdles. Now let's talk about the third one. Again, uh, if I didn't get that second one, I'm not moving forward. I'm just probably not going to move forward. Now I might, if it was a really big account, I might, if I felt like I just had something that was superior and nobody else had access to it, like there might be reasons why I would move forward, but I would say nine times out of 10, I push pause. It's just not, it's not the time yet. They're not yet ready. Maybe they don't trust me yet. And so we just have to do a little bit more relationship building in order to get to that point. But I wouldn't move forward unless I had that. So the second thing now, the second thing, or excuse me, the third thing is I have to make sure that Bob is not going to share my quotes with his current agent or any other agent so that that other agent gets a last look. This is is the nail in the coffin. If Bob isn't willing to do that, I am certainly not moving forward. Because let's just say, for example, he says, you know, yeah, you know, 5%. If you can be 5% less expensive, then I'll do business with you. Now, if I then, perfect, I go through my process and I offer my quote and his agent gets his quote and, you know, he takes my quote and then goes back to his agent and says, hey, you know, I got this quote and it's, um, it's 9% less expensive than you. Um, I, I want you to see if you can like, you know, go back and requote it. Well, you know, as well as I do that, that agent's going to say, Hey, let me see the quote. I'm going to go back to my underwriter and see if I've got any more room. And I mean, almost always the underwriter is going to be able to requote it, drop their price down. Worst case scenario is the other agent will also remove some of his or her commission in order to get down to what they need to in order to win the business. And I will also tell you that 
you know, many times it's like, just get close and you will keep the business as the incumbent agent. So if this third one, the other agent doesn't get any last looks, there's no like requote by the other agent here. We're not here to keep them honest. If the insured is unwilling to do that, you know, he might say something like, well, hey, Charles, I appreciate it. But, you know, I've been with this agent for a few years and I don't want to just like move the business. That loyalty is important to me. You know, if I receive the quotes and, you know, I'm going to probably tell him what I've got to see if he can kind of like keep the business I say, yeah, I appreciate that. Like, that's great. Um, it's just a no for me. Like, I, I appreciate what you're saying. Like, and I appreciate you being forthright. Um, it's just that doesn't work out for me. Um, so it's a pause button for right now. Those are the three things, folks, I'm telling you. Those are the three things. If you can get those three things, feel free to go through a quoting process. Feel free, if I can even put it this way, feel free to never ask for the broker of record letter and only ever go through quotes if you can get those three things. Totally up to you. I still think that's foolish. But you know, getting access, maybe even like uh, the market you want is probably the incumbent carrier because usually the incumbent carrier wants to keep the business. So it's probably going to be on number one. But even if you can't get it, I would say like, you know, those three things, you're going to increase your hit ratio dramatically, dramatically, if you can get those three things. Now, let's just kind of recap. The first one was you need to have exclusive access to the markets that you know you need in order to be competitive. If Bob's willing to give those to you, perfect, you keep going. If he says no, want to, want to give those to his other agent, whatever, it's not, I'm not moving forward. So that's the first one. The second one is, the insured, Bob, has to tell you exactly what you have to accomplish in order to be guaranteed the business, to win the business, that he promises he will not renew with the incumbent agent or any other agent if you can accomplish A, B, and C, whatever that is. Okay? So that's the second thing. The third thing is nobody's getting any last looks, not the incumbent agent or anybody else. In fact, if I can even say it this way, here's how I, how I bring up that topic to a prospect. I'll say something like, you know, Bob, you know, I really appreciate you being forthright and you know talking to me about these three things. I I I'm, think I'm really and ready to move forward, uh, but this last one is kind of a sort of a, a deal breaker. Is that I actually feel it's sort of um, quasi unethical if, let's say, for example, your agent gives you his quote and then um, you give that quote to me and then I just sort of squeak under. Like that really wouldn't be, I think, really ethical. And so what I'm going to ask in this process is that you promise not to share any of the quotes that you receive with me, and you promise also not to share my quotes with any of the other agents, that nobody gets a last look, and we all bring our quotes up front. And if I can accomplish that 5%, then I win the business. If you're willing to do that, if, you know, if we can like, agree to that, because you know, I, I fully believe you're a man of your word, if we can agree to that, I'm willing to move forward with you. So I'm going to ask it that way, because we're talking about tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, a million of dollars and above if you're working on a big account. It just makes sense to do these things, right? At the end of the day, this just makes sense. So if you can get those three things, I would likely probably move forward. And I certainly would on a big account. I'm always going to go for BOR first. That just makes more sense because you want to not just go to your other two markets. It makes sense to also represent the current one. So that just is wise after all said and done. Now, what I would tell you to do after this is that once you leave that appointment or like you're on the telephone, you just hang up the phone, whatever it is, you need to send an email to Bob and outline the three things that you guys agreed to. Send an email. Bob, thanks so much for meeting with me. I really appreciate it. You know, the I'm looking forward to working on these quotes and bringing you something that's going to be a, a great product for your organization. It's going to protect your assets, and it's going to be something that's well within your insurance budget. Based upon our conversation, you know, you agreed to allow me to have exclusive access to these carriers, and then I'm going to list them out. I have to say thank you very much, Bob. I'm, I'm excited to be able to work with these carriers going forward. Uh, number two, you agreed that I had to have um, a premium savings of 5% compared to your uh, the other quotes that you received. If I am 5%, you, know, you agreed to uh, guarantee me the business, that you would do business with me and not renew with your current agent or any other agent. I appreciate that, Bob. And the third thing was that nobody's getting a last look, neither me nor the current agent or anybody else. We bring in our quotes, the best quote wins. I'm excited to be able to move forward, Bob. I know that you're a man of your word, and that's why I'm willing to move to um, invest my time and to move forward on this. And I just thank you for the opportunity to work with you. Thanks so much, Charles. That would be an email that I would send. Send that, put it in writing. Why? Because Bob's going to forget what he said. 
and Bob might be speaking to another agent or two other agents or whatever, and Bob's going to be like forgetting, oh, yeah, that's right. I told Charles he could have that insurance care. Bob doesn't remember. So we have to be able to put it in writing to Bob. Now, also, during that no man's land, I, I call no man's land that, that point where like you meet with the prospect, okay, you meet with them, and then to the final point of like actually sitting down and offering your quote, there's that gap of like weird time. I call that no man's land. Um, during that time of no man's land, it's amazing what Bob forgets. It is amazing what Bob forgets. So we have to remind Bob a few times. You might give him a call and just sort of give him an update on what's happening. Hey, Bob, just wanted to call and let you know I'm still alive. I'm working on these quotes. I'm working with those two carriers, you know, ABC Insurance Carrier and XYZ. Thank you for giving me exclusive access. And I really believe I'm going to be able to show up with that 5% um, savings that you and I agreed to in order to, to win your business. And so... You know, I'm hoping to have those quotes in pretty soon. I'm looking forward to bringing you those. And, you know, again, I'm just glad to be able to work with someone like you who's an, a man of integrity, a straight shooter who's not going to be sharing those quotes, which is one of the things we talked about. So thank you so much, Bob. I just want to let you know I'm here. I'm alive and I'm working on it. Um, I would probably put that in writing. I would also maybe send an email. You just kind of like, hey, just want to give you a heads up. We're working on things. Things are working out pretty good. Here are the three things that we discuss. I feel like I'm going to be able to follow through on that, and I'm just looking forward to you know, having you as a client of mine. When you finally get your quotes, by the way, I would tell you, you know, if, they, if the insured isn't going to give me the signed broker record letter on their current policy, then I'm not willing to give him everything he wants yet. Okay, So I'm not going to meet and give him my quotes um, until I feel I'm ready to. Okay? And I, will, I would not give my quotes unless the, the incumbent agent has already given his or her quotes. I'm just not. This is a game of positioning. It's war. And I'm not going to uh, just kind of put all of my eggs in, in one basket and assume that Bob even remembers all of this stuff because he forgets. He doesn't remember. And just I'm not going to do it. And so I'm going to contact Bob once I've got stuff ready and say, hey, Bob, you know, I'm I'm just giving you a call because I, I think I'm going to be having all of my stuff done pretty soon. I just wanted to find out, have you received your your renewal quote yet? How did it go? How does it look? And so I'm just going to ask him just to kind of find out. My, my primary goal here is just to find out, have you already received your quotes from your current agent and any other agent? I want to be last in. I just do, period. I just want to be last in. And I might even ask Bob, like, how did it look? Like, did it go up? Did it, like, was it a big increase? What would you get? Um, he might say, hey, I got this smoking great quote. Okay, well, that's good for me to know. Uh, he might even share it. Um, even though I like told him I don't want him sharing my quotes with anybody, he might share numbers he got with me, so that's fine. Um, he might just say, hey, I got my renewal and it went up like 32%. I'm pretty upset about this. And it's great to know. But I am not going to set an appointment to meet with him until the incumbent agent has already given their numbers. I'm just not willing to do it. I have spent too much time. My marketing team has spent time. My account managers have spent time. My underwriters have spent time. I'm not going to burn my relationship with my underwriters by you know, having them do all this work and then they just don't get it because another agent might have like heard something and then went back and got a requote. I'm just not going to do it. I want to position myself for victory. And I want you to do that as well, Permission Nation. I want you to position yourself for victory. It just makes sense. So when you then finally have your quotes and you're ready to sit down with the insured and your proposal, typically in your proposal, you're going to have like the, fir the front cover sheet. Okay, you might have a copy. They've got a copy. However, you're going to do it. Um, you go through that first page. The very next page should be those three things you talked about. You have to remind Bob. Bob, remember, we had this awesome conversation 45 days ago. We've emailed a couple of times. These are the three things that we have to be reminded. I'd say something like, Bob, I'm just really excited to go through this proposal with you here in a moment. And you know, as you recall, we talked about me having access to those two carriers. I've got quotes here from ABC and from XYZ, and I'm looking forward to going through it. So again, just thank you very much for being a man of integrity, allowing me to work with those carriers. I really appreciate that. The second thing we discuss is that, uh, as, it, as it says here, uh, I have to be about 5% or more less expensive than what you're receiving from your other agents in order to be guaranteed the business. And I really appreciate, again, you just being a man of integrity. And I'm really hoping that 
um, I'm going to be able to show you something that is, has achieved that. So thank you for the opportunity to, to work with you. And then finally, you know, as we discussed, no sharing quotes, you know, you're not, where nobody's getting a last look. Your current agent's not getting a last look. I'm not getting a last look. We're all coming in with our quotes right now, and we're going to see who wins. And so again, just thank you for being a man of integrity. Thank you for working with me and letting me actually like go through this process with you. And now that we've covered those bases, let's go through the quote from the proposal. If you do that, ladies and gentlemen, if you do that permission nation, you're likely going to see your hit ratio go up dramatically. I actually feel to the point in which you're going to write about 50% more commission this year because you will be winning accounts that you sometimes, maybe, frankly, more often than not lose. Why? Because now we have set rules to the game. Now you have set boundaries upon which you will actually play this game. And we're also reminding Bob he's a man of integrity. We are reminding Bob several times about what we discussed. Why? Because sales is war. You're a professional. You're an insurance agent who doesn't want to come in second place or third place. You have to win. Your children can't eat unless you win. You're not going to be able to afford your mortgage unless you win. So we're, we're not here playing patty cake. We're not here playing games. We have to do what we can do in order to actually achieve success. This is what we do as producers. And I know you want to do these things as well. So do those three things, and then write 50% more commission in a 12-month period. And once that happens, do me a favor. Next time you're out here in Nashville, Tennessee, give me a call. Send me an email. Let's do dinner, and dinner's on you because you're going to be so rich for making all these extra accounts into clients. My name is Charles Specht. I am the president and CEO of Permission Network, where I teach and train insurance agents just like you how to build a $1 million or more book of business through signed broker of record letters. This is the Millionaire Insurance Producer Podcast.